Hello everyone, welcome back. My name is Adrian Somoza and this is Bond. And today I'm sharing with you the second part of a video that I started last week, where I showed you the first part of my design process. Today I'm going to share the second part and hopefully you will gather useful information to apply to your design process. Now, the process that I am doing might not be useful for you, so just consider it, sift, and use whatever makes sense for you. Having said that, let's get into the program. Well, for this part, what I tried to do is to create some badges. Um, I think badges add a little of character to the identity, and what I was trying to do here is starting by, by doing something symmetrical. So having both words repeated uh, on each side of, of the circle creates balance, right? But then kind of felt like it was redundant to have the word two times in Japanese. So I tried doing the word in Japanese and then in, in English. But then it was redundant to have like three, ti three times the word, uh, two times in Japanese, one in English. So I removed one and I just kept one in English and one in Japanese. And then I tried something more minimal, but with the main M character of the Japanese word. And then I started to play with other options. As you can see, I'm trying like different weights and the reason I change weights it's because I'm trying to match the visual weight of the little letters with the border of the circle and the character weight. So I'm trying to match that and if I'm not matching it then I'm trying to create contrast like with this M. So I'm tr either matching the, the weight of the thin lines or I'm creating contrast. After that, I thought maybe I can do a little uh, test with something a bit riskier and more asymmetric S to create a little bit of tension. So what, so what I did was I aligned this little wor uh, Japanese word in the middle of the circle. And here I had tried to align it uh, vertically to the middle of the center. Didn't feel quite right. Like this white space here is a little bit weird. Then I tried to rot rotate it a little bit and see how that worked. Still felt a little bit off. Then I did the same with a M and I think here is when I decide, okay, that's good enough. Let's move on with a, with a design, right? Um, I like to pay attention to detail and try to, to put as much thought as possible in each element that I put in the, in the design. But sometimes you just gotta move on and then maybe come back later on. So th that's what I did here. Um, I started to play with uh, having this little batch, a title and a paragraph, right? And I started with a with a vertical edge, and every element was aligned left on that edge. And then I, I started to play with this little line to create a little bit of asymmetry and a little bit of tension in the design. Um, I don't like things that are too static. Um, I try to create visual interest by trying to add elements that guide the user's eye to the places I want them to, to go. So here I use this line to stress the title. Um, then I felt like it was too conventional. So what I did is I used the gutter to separate the, the title and the paragraph and I used this 
column here to define the, the width of this line, right? I always use, as you can see, with the title as well, I'm using two columns for the title. I'm also using, uh, let me see, three columns for the paragraph. So I always try to find for any element in the design a connection to the grid, whether it's one edge or a number of columns. The, the reason why I use grids is to create visual rhythm. So that's why you want to have elements that repeat their width and that, that have proportional widths. So this paragraph has three columns, this title has two columns, and this line has one column. So it's three, two, one, right? That creates a little bit of rhythm, a little bit of balance. It's like the rhythm of the music. And here I'm trying something more minimal and more impactful. So what I'm trying to do here is to create visual depth and a sense of three-dimensional space by using this big ass character um, that it's kind of feels like it's on the front, like very near, like imagine this is a like a landscape. Now this character would would be like maybe a tree that it's very near to the camera. And this title would be something that it's middle distance. And then the paragraph would be something like far farther away. And then the small letters here would be like the most further away from in, in the landscape, right? If, I'm, if we are looking at a landscape. And I like to think of my designs as landscapes because that helps me to uh, create this visual depth. So I'm always trying to do something really big, something medium sized and something really, really small, like this little Japanese characters. And this creates this visual depth, right? And the other thing that I'm doing here is I'm creating like this diagonal in the composition where it starts here with this big ass character, then it goes to the title and then it finishes in the logo. Um, and then maybe you go down with, a, with this vertical edge and you read the paragraph. And that's how I use sizes in compositions to guide the user's eye. As you can see here, I'm using one color, I'm using one typography and, and the Japanese one, so two typographies. Um, and I'm mainly playing with the, with the position of the elements and the, the sizes of the elements. Then, as you can see, I tried using the logo in one column, but I felt like it was like too blocky. So then I moved away from the column and I made these two things smaller. Now, I'm still using this vertical edge to align the elements. So even though these two elements are not 100% blocked on the grid, they are still connected to the grid in some way. And that creates a, a like structure and that gives a, a, a sense of cohesiveness. It's like gluing the elements together by creating this edge. Then I started to play with images, right? I used three columns for this image and then I tried to, I did a repetition of the image to create like a little bit of continuity between the top and the bottom of the design so that it feels like it's flowing and it's not something like static and rigid. Since here I had the the elements connected by the white space here, like if you can if you can see here, the white space between the M and the line and between the line and the paragraph are very similar. So that creates connection between these elements, right? Proximity creates connection between the, the elements and helps the I group elements. Now when I'm adding an image I can start to play a little bit more with the edges and create more tension. So that's when I I decide, okay, I want to group the paragraph with the image and not anymore with the line. So 
that's why I did this composition where I created a CTA, an image, and a paragraph, and they are all connected to each other. Now, how did it do that? I use the Gestalt principle of proximity to create grouping. And because the image is repeated, now I have continuity between these two groups, and they understand, and, and you can understand that they are related to each other, and they're not just um, random objects thrown in there. And also, the, this visual edge here in the, in the left, this vertical edge, is also helping me group all of these elements together. So that's how you can explode a little bit the elements in the composition and still maintain the visual connection between them. Then I started to play with the CTA. And I started to do something, let's, let me show you, something uh, more circular. I started to play with the shape of the CTA. I started to line left, move the, move the arrows. Um, add border radius to just one corner and try to play with that, moving things around, again creating tension in the composition and not just aligning things to the center all the time because that's boring. Uh, if, if you're always centering things, it's, it becomes boring. I always try to find a way to to innovate or kind of innovate with a typical things, since this is going to be a, something really, really minimal, uh, I want to just keep um, basic shapes and I just want to play with, play a lot with the elements inside the, the CTA and I want to be sure that I'm doing something that it's uh, unique in a way, it doesn't have to be uh, super original, I'm sure other people did this, but I'm not referencing any any composition for this. Um, so I'm trying, for example, aligning things to the center of the circle. I'm using the the middle edges to align the elements. I started to play with uh, a repetition of the circle, and just to be able to create like a connection between start here and the arrow. Then I tried to put it uh, in the composition that I had with the photograph. And it didn't work really. So then I started to play with other elements like a gray background. And though it could work, when I'm having a hard time deciding um, if, if I like something or not, what I tried to do is to copy, duplicate the design and do a variant of it. And trying to see like which one I like best. Sometimes adding elements improves the composition and sometimes it creates more uh, chaos and it really doesn't add, right? So many times less is more and it's better to be able to have less elements in the composition and manage them better than actually adding things and just uh, making it worse, right? So now I'm using a shortcut to move between the artboards and compare them. Uh, just to be able to compare these three, four options. Um, and that's when I try to decide like, mm, which one do I like best, why, compare them side by side. I think this is a great way to, to do wise choices, right? Because you wanna, again, you don't wanna add elements for the sake of it, you just wanna add elements if you're sure that they are making the composition better and helping in the readability and the aesthetic of the composition. Okay guys, that's it for today. I really hope that was uh, useful and if you find it useful, I'm doing my best to create a community that is generous. So I encourage you, if you are looking at, at these videos, I'm doing this for free, so please share it, be generous with others, okay? It's really easy for you and it will help a lot. And Last but not least, a word of encouragement. If you feel that you want to design websites like this and you, you're just starting out, or maybe uh, you already started out but you're struggling, let me encourage you. I was there a thousand times and I've 
go through it. The only way that you, you will get better is if you are disciplined enough to make yourself do the necessary things and to take the necessary steps towards your goals. So don't give up, keep on trying. I'm always striving to learn more. I'm always putting myself in uncomfortable positions and trying to do things that I'm not used to do just to keep learning and keep trying new things. So that's it for today, guys. Hope that was useful and I will see you in the next video.